Hello scholars, so today we're going to be making our figures after the same style as William H. Johnson. Now to do that we're going to have just really weird looking or really weird size heads, bodies, hands, all that kind of good stuff. But the one thing we do want, we do want head, torso, arms, legs, hands, feet, and we do want our person to look like they are moving. That is for sure. So that much is going to be for sure. Now this is one very large piece of paper. If you don't have a 12 by 18 piece of paper, you can always get two smaller ones and tape them together. And there's a video down below that shows you how to do that. Now, for this one, the first thing I'd like you to do before you start drawing, what is your person doing? Think of an action. Think of something that they're going to be doing. So right here, I think I want my person, let's see, kicking, jumping, falling, uh, reading, texting. I think I'm going to have my person just, oh, I know. I'm going to have my person leaping, like they're jumping up in the air. So I think I'm going to draw my head way up here. There we go. Then I'm going to draw my torso kind of crooked like this, and I'm going to put my neck in there. So there's how I'm starting. And then I'm going to let my feet look like they're jumping up like this, way up and way up. And it's okay if they cross each other. That's not a problem. So I'm going to put one foot in the front and one foot back here. And then of course, my feet, they're nice and pointy. See that? Then over here, I'm gonna draw my arms. Arm up and back, arm up and back. There and there with the little hands. So now you can see my person really looks good. They're jumping. I've got nice bending arms and legs and all that kind of good stuff. Now, once you get to this point, we're gonna start putting in some details on your person. I want my person to be very happy. So I'm going to make a big old mouth, nose. Let's go ahead and close the eyes. There we go. Let's give her some nice ears. Yes, we're making a girl. Why not? And then, of course, I think I'm going to give her some nice little pigtails. There we go. That'll make her look real happy. There we go. And we'll even give her a nice little T-shirt. There we go. I could give her shorts, a skirt, whatever I want to. I think I'm going to give this girl, oh, let's give her some nice shorts. There we go. So here I am just putting in all my nice details, at least as good as I can. There. So that looks pretty decent. And then over here, let's put my hands way out there. And we saw in the examples of William H. Johnson, those hands were humongous. So if you want to make some big, huge hands, that's not a problem, that's probably a good thing. All right, so it looks like my person is done. So now it's time for my background. The background, we wanna make it as simple as possible. I just wanna draw a ground line. That's all you really need. So down here at the bottom, I'm gonna draw a ground line. Not here, it has to be behind your person. So I'm gonna make a line right there, there, and there. And that's it, I'm done. If you want to, you can add some other lines. This is gonna be outside, so I don't really have to draw any lines down here. A lot of his pictures, his paintings, you saw some lines that were repeating in the background. But if this is gonna be grass, maybe I'll just do some little pieces of grass and repeat that instead. And then back over here, maybe I'll draw a nice, happy sun, and that's it, I'm done. So that's pretty good for a figure. Now, this is pretty good. This is another one that I did that shows somebody who's singing and you can see that in this one I did do the ground with all the little lines in it but I kept the background very very simple now when you're finished with this you can always leave it with crayon or you can go over it with a sharpie marker it has to be a black sharpie marker and you can color it with either crayons like I did over here or you can actually use watercolors I'm going to show you how to paint this but I'm going to do it very very quickly. Now, here's how I start. I always like to start on the skin because the skin is usually the hardest thing to do. If you want the skin, you have to decide whether you want this to be a light colored skin or a dark colored skin. If I want it to be light colored skin, then I'm going to use the color orange to color it in. If I want dark colored skin, then I'm going to use the color brown. But brown, you can just pick it up and use it to make dark colored skin. If you want light skin, you do have to do something special to the orange. Watch this. I'm going to grab some orange. And now look how orange that is. Whoa, that's way too orange. It's very, very dark. So if you want the skin to be a light color, you're gonna get a lot of orange. And then after you have this orange, dip it one time in your water. That's gonna take some of the paint off, but not all of the paint off. 
look what happens to this orange when I take it off. It's still orange, but it's a very light orange. And that does make this look a lot like skin. So it's a very light skin color. So you need some orange, and then you just dip it in your water. That's it. You're not going to clean it off. You're just going to dip it one time because you're not trying to take all the orange off. You're just taking a little orange off. And there you go. The skin's done. After you're done with the skin, you can start painting all of these other things right here. Now, the one thing I am going to warn you about, if you paint something, anything, don't paint right next to it. If I paint the skin and I make it all beautiful, and then after that, I try to paint here, look what's going to happen. I'm going to make a mistake on purpose. I'm going to grab some red, and I'm going to paint right here. Now, you can see that red touched the skin, and it's starting to go in there. That's a bad thing. That's what happens whenever two colors of watercolor, two wet colors, touch. They start to mix together. So how do I fix that? Well, don't do that. If that happens, you can always get a paper towel and you can put it on top of here, and that should help to clean it up. Now, if you can't get a paper towel, well, maybe use your finger to wipe it up. Now, I'm going to start painting the rest of this. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me. I'm just going to go ahead and do it in super fast motion. And we're back. And so you can see I finished painting all this stuff. Now, if I really wanted to, when this is dry, I would go ahead and get my black crayon and I'd come back and I'd outline my lines to make them a little bit cleaner because painting always makes the lines look a little bit harder to see. So I could go back and clean this up. Uh, you might have noticed the sound suddenly got a lot better. My apologies. I just noticed that my little microphone here was not plugged in at the beginning of this recording. And <laughs> I'm just real sorry about that. I, that happens every once in a while. I have that mic because the microphone on my computer is really bad. Now, this is one example. Back here, of course, I have another example. Back here, of course, I have another example. I have done this project so many times. I have many, many many examples. Back when we use this on really big paper, we did this with tempers. You can see how that looks all nice and crazy. And I have another big one like this, just waiting on the bus. Even though he's just standing there, you can still see that bending arms and bending legs still makes it look pretty decent. So now I'd like you to try yours. Please make sure you take your time. If you don't like it, you can always turn it over and start over again. Please don't go fast. Do your best work. I want to see you working hard on these and I can't wait to see how they turn out.